The year was 1945. On August 6, the first nuclear bomb was dropped on the Japanese city of Hiroshima. Three days later, the second atomic bomb was dropped on Nagasaki. The two bombings killed between 129,000 and 226,000 people, most of whom were civilians. Enter 1954. A Japanese film production by the name of Toho Studios released a little movie directed by Ishiro Honda and written by Ishiro Honda and Teiko Murata. That movie was Gojira. This was the start of the longest running film franchise of all time. Many people who have never seen the movie may associate it with some guy in a rubber suit destroying miniature buildings when in fact it's an extremely dark and disturbing metaphor of the World War Japanese bombings and all the suffering and destruction it left in the aftermath. Don't believe me? Check out this clip. <laughs> From this movie and the next two sequels, Godzilla had become an iconic character and had rightfully earned the title King of the Monsters. Godzilla is still the longest running movie franchise of all time, with 35 films as of 2019, and number 36 will be coming out in 2021 with Godzilla vs. Kong. Throughout this franchise, Godzilla has been many things, including the bad guy, hero, anti-hero, a symbol of destructive events of Japan's history, animal, and a god. With so many different versions of the character, as well as so many movies with a variety of tones, there is something for everyone to enjoy. Fast forward several years, and in 1998, the first American Godzilla movie was made, and simply titled Godzilla. It was directed by Roland Emmerich and distributed by TriStar Pictures. While it served as an okay monster movie, it was a terrible representation of the character, butchering Godzilla by making him a giant coward that runs away from the military, cannot fire his signature atomic breath, let alone fire, but hey, at least his breath is kind of flammable, and he gets killed by 12 missiles. But hey, at least his son has an awesome show. The film was poorly received by fans, critics, heck, even previous Godzilla actors, and even Toho disowned him as Godzilla, and he is now more famously known as Zilla, taking the god out of his name. It would be 16 years before another American Godzilla movie would be made. In 2014, Warner Bros. released the second American Godzilla movie, simply titled Godzilla once again. It was directed by Gareth Edwards. This film was much more positively received by everyone compared to the 1998 film especially Godzilla himself, who was a force of nature and dominated every scene he was in, despite having very little screen time, not to mention having the best death of a Godzilla movie yet. The success of this film, combined with the success of the MCU, made Warner Bros. decide to create a monster cinematic universe often referred to as the Monsterverse. The second movie to be part of this Monsterverse was Kong Skull Island, directed by Jordan Vo Roberts. The ending of this film set up the return of three classic Toho monsters, Rodan, Mothra, and Ghidorah. In 2019, the Big G turned 65 years old, so what better way to celebrate than with another movie? Enter Godzilla, King of the Monsters. <laughs> Directed by Michael Dodery and once again distributed by Warner Bros, the film received negative reviews from critics but had a much higher audience score compared to the 2014 film. Why did audiences and fans enjoy this movie more than the 2014 movie? Simply put, it's a great Godzilla movie. Now I do want to clarify, I don't think this is a good film in general. The characters are bland and you don't care about any of them, or they are like the mom and are genuinely terrible, and although the film tries to redeem her, it still doesn't excuse her actions, and her death is not particularly sad, especially when that person is responsible for millions of deaths around the world. Once again, the villain's motivation is humans are bad because of war and climate change, so we need to kill a bunch of humans off and the rest will evolve to become stronger. Haven't heard that one before. The story is serviceable, but nothing beyond that. And this film has terrible humor. Kiwai? So she's a gonorrhea. Huh? Ghidorah! Ha 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 ha! Get it? It's a sex thing. So that automatically makes it hilarious. 
While this movie definitely has some major flaws and I get where critics are coming from, the parts that work are the ones that make this movie a great Godzilla film. When I think of the best Godzilla films, they often take themselves seriously, but still have fun with the monsters in action. Also, King of the Monsters might have one of the greatest respects for its source material I've ever seen in a film, with many references from other movies sprinkled throughout it. The Titans, as they are referred to, are all treated with reverence and have this sense of spirituality surrounding them. This is one of the few times in the history of the Godzilla franchise that the kaiju are treated as intelligent animals, but are also a force of nature that can only be stopped by one another. However, the big Toho 4 get treated with even more respect and dignity, considering their origin. First, Rodan, the Fire Demon. I love how the 1956 Rodan movie is referenced as that movie ends with both Rodans dying on a volcano. Rodan in this movie is a wild card freelancer that just works with whoever will benefit him the most. Or in other words, he's the starscream of the monsterverse. I'm not really so bad, you know. Ghidorah. He's the evil one. Rodan's design in this movie is my favorite of all his past incarnations, sporting lava rocked fused skin bright orange outlining his wings and leaving behind a fiery trail of embers, which can even be used to burn his enemies. One could argue that he is the smartest of the four, especially with him pulling a barrel roll after seeing the jets do the same, all with a big smile on his face. The sound design on him is great, using various bird sounds such as cranes and an angry vulture. His musical theme fits his personality perfectly. It's primal, bombastic, and fast. I can see why the director wanted to be the pilot that ejected only to be eaten by him immediately after. Although he might arguably have the most fun personality out of the big Toho 4, he's easily the least relevant to the plot of the story. Unlike the other main kaiju, you could write him out and replace him with another kaiju, and nothing would really change. Next, we have the queen of the monsters herself, Mothra. <laughs> While she has very little screen time in this film, she steals every scene she's in, with her elegant and beautiful design, as well as being accompanied by her enchanting score. She is awesome, period. But for the love of- Please stop shipping her with Godzilla. As a larva, she looks pretty similar to the original larva design, with a similar shape and coloring with the same ability to shoot webs. However, this new one has bioluminescence, which is one of the main reasons for her prior mentioned beauty. Her adult design is probably the most different from her OG design, with that one being cute and fluffy looking, whereas this one is a warrior, with praying mantis forelimbs, wasp, stinger, and slimmer, narrower wings to aid in more agile and speedy combat. And she still has her iconic screech, it's just been updated a little. She continues her tradition of being reborn, with her sacrifice for Godzilla in order for him to achieve burning form, and the end credits hinting at another egg of hers having been found. Now, what would a hero be without a villain? And they don't come much meaner than the three-headed dragon himself, King Ghidorah. Ghidorah is often described as the Joker to Godzilla's Batman. With every reboot of the film series, Ghidorah has always made his way back in. Out of all the versions of Ghidorah over the years, I think I can safely say that this is the best one hands down, or at least it's my personal favorite, and it's all because of his personality. In the other films, he's described as the destroyer of worlds, yet acts no different from any other kaiju Godzilla has faced. The major difference is, he usually has been more powerful than any other kaiju Godzilla has fought, with a few exceptions of course. However, in this film, he oozes evil. With his little snarls, sneers, and glares, they all add to his overall status as the three-headed devil, which is probably why he has a very snake-like design. His design reminds me of the three-headed Smaug from the Hobbit movies which I think is a good thing since that is an awesome looking design. He still has his signature horns and his wings are much bigger proportionally than in past incarnation, but personally I think it helps add to his cool factor. I like how he even uses them as an intimidation display, just like animals in real life such as peacocks. Honestly, design wise there's not much to say other than I like it. Oh, I guess some people didn't like that he walked on his wings like a quadruped sometimes, and to that I say... The 
best part of Ghidorah is his personality, with each head having a name and a personality to go along with it. The middle head is Ichi, meaning one in Japanese. He's the alpha and probably the smartest out of the three. The right head is Ni, who is the bloodthirsty one, always ready for a fight, and who is the most malicious. And finally, we have the precious child known as Kevin. He's curious and kind of submissive and not super violent, and he's a head loss survivor. <laughs> If you are familiar with the MonsterVerse, then you know that Kevin is a meme and the precious child that the fandom will protect with their lives. Past films couldn't really individualize the heads, since they were all puppets attached to strings, but this film wanted to do that, going as far as to hire three different motion capture actors to represent each head. The sound design is similar to Mothra's in the sense that you can still hear the iconic roar in there, but it's clearly been updated, still sending chills down your spine. Overall, this version of Ghidorah feels maliciously evil and not just the bad kaiju that Godzilla has to fight against, but an actual villain. He is the only exception, I think, to being just an intelligent animal. He seems to be doing things on purpose, knowing they will bring pain and suffering to others. Put all these things together and you make a great villain for our hero to face down. Well, it's all led to this. The big G. This is probably the hardest one for me, so I'll start with the design. It's still that great 2014 design, but in my opinion, better. Thanks to the more traditional looking spines and a rounded tip tail, plus just looking more beefy and muscular overall. I love the use of not just the 2014 roars, but mixing them with some of the past roars from other movies. The different forms that he has throughout the movie are also excellently done, such as his constantly glowing blue back after being juiced from the nuke in his burned form. He is the best example of an intelligent animal of all the four main Toho monsters. I also love the use of the glowing spines for an intimidation display. Personality-wise, he's both very animalistic, but has this sort of old man feel to him, in the sense of, I've gotta take you everything around here. He still retains some tactics from the 2014 film, such as attacking Ghidorah in the water where he clearly has the advantage. He's the protector of Earth, a force of nature, and brings balance to the world. And that's the main point I want to make about Godzilla. General criticisms of Godzilla as a franchise have been that he has no personality. He's just a giant monster, and people that say that don't fully understand the idea behind him. He has had movies where he does fill that slot of just a giant monster. But in many other films, he's showing off his personality, from his silly, gloating victory dance to the mourning of his dead son. But the best Godzilla films aren't when he's a hero, or the villain, or even in between, but it's when he's an idea, an allegory, a symbol. Those movies are the ones that put more emphasis on the theme. Some of the most highly regarded Godzilla films are Gojira, Godzilla vs. Biolanti, Shin Godzilla, and GMK. These films tackle some serious issues such as war, natural disasters, and the ethical choice of tampering with genetic power. This film connects to the 2014 film and the theme of the balance of nature and how it has a natural order in restoring said balance. We see this talked about in the 2014 movie but it's more shown and actually explored in the 2019 movie. Ghidorah is referred to as an invasive species. One can even draw parallels between Godzilla and Ghidorah with the American alligator and Burmese python in Florida, which are also two apex predators fighting to be the top dog of an ecosystem. As shown after the Rodan chase and Rodan vs Ghidorah fight, we see Godzilla ambush Ghidorah bringing him onto his home turf, and most likely would have succeeded in killing him as well, had the humans not tried intervening and sending the oxygen destroyer. Not just in the movie, but in real life has humanity gotten involved with nature to solve a problem when nature had it handled. And just like the movie, the thing we do to try to help often does more harm than good. An example of this is with the tiddler or the mosquito fish. This tiddler originates from southern parts of Illinois and Indiana throughout the Mississippi River in the US. Found in shallow water away from larger fish, the little creature was intentionally introduced to areas with large populations of, you guessed it, mosquitoes, to decrease the number of bugs by eating their larvae. However, native fish were already good at supplying maximal control. Introducing the mosquito fish has turned out to be more damaging to aquatic life. People are worried that humans are going to destroy nature and all that bad stuff, but nature has been dealing with much bigger things than us, and has a way of restoring balance. This is the main theme that is focused on both 2014 and King of the Monsters. There's one more thing that I want to talk about, and that's Sirizawa's sacrifice. For those of you that don't know, in the original, he sacrificed himself to detonate the oxygen destroyer and kill the original Gojira. 
However, here he does the opposite. He is confronting his demons, looping it back to the original. He makes peace with the creature that represents the destruction caused by war. This movie isn't perfect, obviously, no movie is. However, I hope that I explained enough that the respect this movie has for the franchise and Godzilla as a character cannot go unappreciated. It needs to be recognized, if not by the critics since they are too busy with their heads up there and looking for politics in a movie so they can praise it, to look for the nuances in a Godzilla movie that makes it more than just a big old CGI kaiju slugfest. And that's why I think Godzilla King of the Monsters is indeed a great Godzilla movie. Okay, so I know I said that I would do WandaVision, and I do plan on doing that, as well as the Pacific Rim Black Netflix series. But, you know, there's kind of something big coming out, so, uh, I'm gonna check that out first. Here we go!